whatever mini thing we did, I was terrible at. And I, it just made me think like, how far am I from where I want to be? I got to go through all this. I'm out. So for 10 years, I had what psychologists refer to as a fixed mindset, which is just, I was born like this. Some people are born to do music. Some people aren't. I, in third or fourth grade, I think I tried out for the, the Glee Club and I was, you know, one of the 10% of people that did not make it. But of course I didn't. I'm a bad singer. I'm bad at music. So I'm 17. And this is, this is where it all changed. My mom took my sister and I to a Billy Joel concert. That was my first concert. And he was standing up and playing the piano. And I already liked his music, but I had just never seen a live show like that. And it was so entertaining. And I just came back and was playing member records. So I had a record and I was just playing with a couple fingers. And I went to a friend of mine who's brilliant, still a very good friend of mine um, from many years ago. One of the smartest people I know happened to have a recording studio in his basement in 1980 something, which is like saying I have a spaceship right now. Um, and I said, can you just like, I told him about my seven-year-old experience and, you know, I'm like, I, I really want to do music. Like I'll do it, but I don't think I'm smart enough to get it. And he said, I think his exact words were, dude, you're making this way too complicated. Come here, here, let me give you this. And he, he brought out this, this sheet of paper that just had a handful of chords, which are just a combination of three notes. And it had like a picture of a piano. It's like a C chord is C, E, and G. You can just see it. Right. And he's like, I want you to memorize just a handful of these and then come back to me. So I did that. And then he gave me a book and he was like, don't worry about the notes, but I just want you to look at the chords. And so I started doing that. And I mean, in a few months, I was playing every Billy Joel and Elton John song ever written. I was playing and singing based on that. And I learned, he taught me without knowing the Pareto principle, the 80-20, right? Which, is, which basically mm -hmm. says, you know, most of the results, good or bad, are going to come from just a handful of inputs. So what I didn't know is... You could be functional in music without having to understand all the complexity. And there's nothing wrong with it, by the way. Like to want to be a classical pianist, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. That's just not what I wanted. But nobody bothered to ask me. If that music teacher would have said, hey, what do you want? What are you here for, kid? I would have said, my cousin played a Beatles song and I want to be able to do that. Right. And so people might think it's irresponsible of him to say, let me show you how to play. Let it be. That's, a, that's an easy one. I'm just going to do this. And then we'll get to how to do it correctly later. How great would that have been, right? So that Very I, inspirational. It, Very I, inspirational. So, But I took 10 years to get to that. And then I started looking at everything almost from, and I don't mean this in a negative way, because I, I refer to myself as a professional hack sometimes. Because a hack is just getting to the thing that, it's the most efficient way of getting to the thing that you want to be able to do, right? So, I mean, if you want to lose weight or technically you want to transform your body, right? It's a hack to do push-ups because you're building muscle and muscle is the engine that burns fat. It's not thought of that way, but if you start building the biggest muscles in your body, that's where the that's where you'll, you know, lose the fat that you want to lose. So basically you can 80, 20 that. So I've taught a hundred people who are not interested in CrossFit or any of the crazy stuff that I do or sports. They're just like, I want to be healthy. I want to lose my beer belly. Okay. 80, 20 push, pull, squat, do it 20 times, repeat it five times, wait two days, do it again. Come back to me in a month. Changes everybody. So it's like the, the, the idea is it's not, CrossFit or it's my thyroid and I'm just always going to be like this. My family's like this. There's some middle. It's not, you know, uh, you're going to be at Carnegie Hall, you know, playing perfectly perfect piano or I'm just bad at music. If you want to be, you know, in, in middle school, high school, I wanted to be the guy that showed up at the party that had a piano. I wasn't, I was barely singing at the time. And everyone else would be singing along, right? So I'm just playing a piano man, let's say, and everybody's singing along. Like, that's what I wanted to do. But nobody asked me, what do you want to do? What, what is your specific goal? So when you're really specific with the outcome that you want and you have a, a growth mindset, meaning you believe that talent and ability and skills are not innate, you're not born with them, but they can improve. Now you're born with, you know, everyone's born better and worse at certain cognitive abilities, but you 
absolutely, it's not even controversial in science that new neural pathways are built. So there's kind of a framework for how to do this that I can apply to, you know, again, hiring the right person the first time for your company. I have just a, a book on recruiting and it essentially follows the framework that I talk about, even if it's transforming your body or learning how to speak a new language.